Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we are recreating a 1977 odometer case for a classic motorcycle. Not only will we be going through how to create this object, we'll be understanding how to create these features in here. The original poster that requested this wants to know how to create this feature and also this top feature as well. Not only will we be taking you through how to build this model and to do these features, I'll also be creating a boolean of these two parts, exporting this out to STL, fixing errors that I've come across in here, such as certain types of loft errors, and also some check geometry errors that were inside here. And also you'll notice that I have this at the moment on the correct side. Going through the video, you'll see this on the other side, which was incorrect, and you'll see how I quickly move this around to the correct position. And the key is the way I've built this model in two parts. These parts here will be booling together as one and we'll export this out as STL format ready for production. So I hope you enjoy the channel. I hope this is of use to the original poster. You'll be able to have the file soon. And let's have a look at the techniques that I used when creating this project. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. So this is the first sketch, the very first sketch that's been created. And you can see all the dimensions in there. We've got a B spline here. So it's a free control point B spline and the middle control point is set via this dimension here. It's 18.14, but we don't have to worry about the point 14, it's just B80. And then we've got all the dimensions in here. So I've got the width. I've also added, if you can see in here, I actually added a point at one end and the other. So using this one here, this point, I actually added point and a point I'll do it here and then created a slot between those and attached those points to that slot with a point on line constraint that means that we can use these points for instance if I bring them down and place them in line here as you can see that I've done with the model so these points are actually attached to this curve and to this horizontal line. Allows me to add a dimension in here. And this is quite important because if we're using this dimension, then we're gonna reduce it to create the inner skin of this. Because you'll see, this is the bottom pad, which I use as a pad so you can see part one bottom pad sketch. So I would pad this by something like two millimeter to make the bottom part. And then we start adding an inner skin and we'll use the same sketch for the outer skin. So if I bring all these back in, you can see that I actually created this as a flat object. So all the sections going up, I created this as a flat object. So I mean, just basically the sketch up I haven't even added a body at that point. I know there's a body in there. I didn't even add a body in there. I actually just created those as separate sketches in the document. So for instance, if I create a new document and do it in here, I would come into the sketcher. And the first part that I want to do, well, will be on the XY plane. And we'll create the slot. So this one here create a slot in there and we'll use these two points to make them symmetrical to this point here. So we've got symmetry across those. We've gone over constraint because we've got a horizontal line in here somewhere. Just click to select and hit delete. And then we've got this here. So this is really our basis to start with. And I would section through here, so I'll just place basically square in here and just trim out this section or even remove this. If I take away this and add a couple of lines in here, so I can use the line 
from here, bring this out and bring this line out as well. Then we can add the B spline in here. So I can use the B spline tool, which is up here and create a B spline, come up, connect it to the center line. So I've got the auto constraints on, so I connect it to that center line and come down and connect like so, hit escape. And we'll make these two points, this one and this one symmetrical to the center line. So this is the process that I actually went through to create this shape. And then we've got this moving along this vertical center line, like so. And we can create that feature in there and we can add some height between this one and this one, like so, add height in there, etc., etc. Now the reason why I added points like this, add the points on here. So we've got the auto constraints on, you can see you've got point on line constraint coming up. And we take this point and this line and also do a point on line constraint. The reason why I did this is so I can get the dimensions in here. Also, it allows me, did that wrong there, bear with me. It allows me to create the inner skin a lot easier because if we got dimensions here, like so, and we dimension this, I'm working at a smaller di dimension at the moment. So let's go 90 in there. Then when it comes to actually creating the inner skin, we can use these dimensions to our advantage. So we'll take this one and dimension this up. So you can see we've got all the dimensions in here and we can change these and alter them to see, see fit. We can use these as our advantage. We've got some dimensions. This one needs a bit of dimensioning in here and making sure this one's got a horizontal constraint as well. I would lock all these down and place some dimensions in here as well between these two. Then we've got the base sketch there. Isn't locked down, but that allows me to control C or edit, duplicate, just creates another copy of that one. So if I hide this sketch, we've got this copy in here. Well, I wanted to create an inner skin in here. So this is quite easy because I've got this one in here. I can alter these dimensions. So we can say something like 80 millimeter and bring this down to 20 mil and bring this one down to 20 mil again or something like that. And when we combine these two together, so we've got these two sketches, I haven't done that properly. That's bring this one up. So you can see the gap in there. So I can come in and change this gap in here, 30 mil and just basically play with this until I get the right gap in that I want in here. So you can see how much easier this is to work with rather than doing it freehand. Obviously I went a bit too wild with the actual gap in at first. But once you've got that, then you've got basically the outer and the inner. And what we need to do is create another sketch for that pad. So we end up combining sketches together like so, go out to sketch, merge sketches. And then you've got now this one with all the dimensions in there of a single sketch with all those lines ready to go. So if we go back to what we did in here, the wrong one, this one here, you can see we've got literally going through. And if I come in to the body, I've named them up as well to make it a lot easier and we hide those. You can see we've got the bottom sketch, which I'm gonna pad. Then we've got a bottom sketch, which is the inner skin. So I'll take these two and combine them together. From that, we will loft to the next sketch, which is this one here, which I've already got the dimensions in here. You can see the gapping in there. And then from there, 
it's basically another sketch that we have a loft or pad to and then this one here which is a loft and then a loft again so we work our way through those these are flat at the moment the next step would be to add dimensions so if i open up the next document so this is the next document and you can see what's happening here so we've got all the sketches in placement for the correct placements going up so we'll loft through here and this is the secret to this feature here because what will happen is that we'll go from the bottom sketch will be a pad take that away and then this lays actually attached or it will be unattached because we don't have to attach these this will create the loft between this one and this one so if I take away the next three this creates the feature that we're looking for so I'll just do that quickly bring back that one come over to the part design and we'll add a pad to that just do two millimeter pad so we've got that one there that goes up to that sketch so that sketch is two millimeters away from there and it's all to do with the placement. So we look at the bottom sketch, the next sketch, come down, look at the placement. You can see that the position, we've got actually, this one here is 20 millimeters up and this bottom one placement position is two millimeters. So two millimeters pad to the sketch and then what we do is take this sketch, use the loft, add section, add this one. And you can see how that's lofted through. Hit OK. And we've got the feature that we're looking for, just from basic pad to the sketch and loft into another sketch. And that's what creates this feature in here. As simple as that so it's just basic lofting from those and we just work our way through if we look back at this one so you can see that feature there and this is the body here we come delving in and what we're looking for is going up the tree so I'm going to hide that pad bring back that pocket so you can see as I hide each of them and bring them back let's just come up to the top and hide that body this one here there we go we can see how the model is starting to build up so this is all to do with lofting and padding all the way through here so we're on pocket two let's hide pocket two bring back pocket one and come up high pocket one bring back the pad and working our way up so this was to do the feature down here so this feature is gone now we get into the additive loft which has two sketches this one and this one so it's lofted from here to here moving up through those sketches so if I hide that you can see those sketches sitting there let's bring back the pad so this is the pad of the bottom so you can see that sketch sitting on top of there and this makes the lip that goes around to add the features to which we can bolt our dials to you can see we've got this lip here and if I hide that you can see where I've padded or lofted from here so this pad here if we open that up we can see the sketch that's involved in that pad that's hide the other two and just hide you can see there's that sketch there we've got the inner taken out so going up it's a good thing about primary action modeling you can see the steps you've taken so the additive loft here let's bring back that one I'm pressing the space bar just to bring back that and you can see that we're at this stage now 
When we come down to the pocket, you can see your holes appeared in the back. So that's for, if we go back to the features here, this is this part here that fits on. I was going to model this part, but I'm not sure if this is a connector or just part of the actual object itself. Very tend to actually get that in. I will do that as a separate body to bring that into this model. And we'll get to the separate bodies in a minute where I've actually added a separate body to this. So that's in the back there. So that pocket, if we have a look at that, open that up, there's a sketch that sits in here. And you can see that green sketch there. It's just basically upon this plane. You can see it there. It's just pocketed all the way through that. Just take the material out of there. And that means that this feature here sits in there and it looks like it's touching this point here. There we go. So it looks like it comes up and attaches in here. It may come up a bit further, but we can pocket further if we so desire. And if you look inside this one here, you can see there's that void there that goes out the back. So, and that lip that we've got these features on. So working our way up, we've got that in there. Sorry, let's just bring that back. So we've got that pocket. And let's hide these two. So the pocket with that sketch, hide that sketch, hide that pocket. We then got a pad. So looking at these, where did this pad come in? There we go. So we're starting to build this feature in here, this pad here. And we've got the sketch from that. I'm very tempted to actually take the bottom out, take this bottom and build this as a separate body. So we've got three bodies, the bottom, and then we've got the loft in to here. And then we've got the top body up here. That means that it decouples those from the actual model. So we can work on those separately and we get less problems when we go back through the model trying to make changes. So it's about decoupling features that can be worked on in isolation. It also means that if we wanted to, we could actually 3D print different parts and bring them together. So if we wanted this as a removable part with latches or screw holes, then that can be easily done. So where was we? We was at this pad here. So we've got this pad in here and these come from dimensions it might be a bit off, but I've got close to these dimensions in here. So these ones here, so these can be adjusted. So we've got this one here and looking back at the other one, this paper diagram here. So this gives me most of the dimensions that we need. Looking back at the model, let's hide that sketch, hide that pad. Next thing we have is the pocket which should be on the other side. So we pocketed it out. So we create this void in here. And the next one down from here, I believe, look at this pocket. That creates the hole. So the 20 mil hole that goes through here. A lot of these sketches in here aren't locked down. So for instance, this one, I can lock this down by putting some width in here and it still moves. That's because we need that attached to this line here. So point on line constraint, that's good. So that's locked down there. And looking back, always check your models, make sure it hasn't broken. If we look at the sketch that created the D in here, see I've got this D. It's not totally locked down because I'm not sure how far away this line is from this center. So I've just placed that in there. It's not fully constrained. It's better fully constrained that, but I haven't got the dimensions for that as of yet. We've done that. Next one is this pad. So this pad started to bring in these. So I've done these as one sketch. This means that we can go in and change these to whatever dimensions there are because I haven't got the dimensions of these holes or the posts. 
so I've done this as one sketch that means that we've got a quality across all these so you can see the little equals in here and that's just a case of basically control or selecting all of these you don't have to control select so selecting all of these making them equal and doing the same for the little inner circle in here creating the inner circle in there making those equal and then adding dimensions to one of those which will propagate through all of them and we've got some basic alignment in here so I've aligned it from the point that I added at the ends which is quite handy 60 millimeters from the ends and we have some horizontal alignment so the center points are horizontally aligned so they keep together so next up going down we've actually run out so this is the bottom body so looking at that that's the bottom body next we have the other feature that was causing a bit of an issue and that's this top body so this top body sits on top of this object and what we do we just hide the bottom body so you can see that it's quite an interesting shape and these were the problematic parts these bits here that come round and creating this effect now the secret to this is basically a draft so we're drafting those edges down if I come into that body so let's hide that one bring this one back and start from the top down so we'll start from the origin you can see we've used something called a shape binder in there this one here so what happens with shape binders this body if I double click it is active right click toggle active body shape binders allows you to make connections from the original body so you can see this orange shading on top of here so to create a shape binder I've got the active body I want to copy will reference this face that goes along here so let's hide the top this one here so to reference this face because I've got an active body this one here body 001 which is hidden at the moment but it's active if I click on here and we'll just open this up you can see we've selected that face click on this green shape binder that binder comes out so that one there that's binded that face so I hide that and we need to show this body 01 and hide this binder and hide that by pressing space but you can see that's copied that face over works it's not copied it it's basically cloned it over so any changes to the underlying body will change this face change the shape of this face allows me to do cross body modeling so now I would use this to build up from the shape binder the rest of the actual object so bring back the binder and we can see that I have a pad from there so you can see that pad is part of this because what's happened is I've created a sketch that sits along half of this binder so you can see it let's just click the binder and press the spacebar that sketch there if we go down and find that binder there it is there that binder there what I did with the sketch bring it in and when I started sketching these upon here I actually pulled in geometry so you can pull in geometry from here like so you can't do this from just straight from the body you have to use a binder and then I traced in using the endpoint and rim point so connect and connect bring this out like so hit escape this one and this one should be equal so that places that along there and I did that for this edge basically use that in there so I don't need any of this in here I'm just going to get rid of it so I created half of the shape in here so to explain that what I've done is created a new document in here and we're just going to do a quick shape binder with a new body and new sketch 
XY plane. OK. And we're going to create something in here, something like this. Close, pad that up. OK. New sketch, like so. So we're literally going through and creating an object, some sort. You can create a new body in here and then come in. We've got this body active. I'm going to select this face of the other body. So we're selecting the other face of the other body. Body, you can see body pad zero one. Create shape binder. Now I've got the shape binder. So new sketch. X Y plane. Okay. And what we can do, you can see the sketch is in there now. We can move that sketch up. But this allows us to use this as reference because if this wasn't here and we try to bring in geometry, you can see you can't bring in the geometry off here, so we can't reference the external geometry. But with a binder, if I hit escape, bring the binder in and then hide the body, what we can do is reference that geometry. So we can pull those through. You can see them being pulled through. So now we can escape, click on the binder, press the space bar. We can actually use this for sketching. So I can attach something to here now, like so. And if I padded that, okay, we now got two bodies. So we've got the top body and that bottom body and we can transform this up into place and it'll be a set match to our model. It allows us to place it upon the model and it's loosely linked between those two. Make sure nothing's selected, do a boolean operation, add the body, add this one. So those are boolean together, okay. And we've got a single body there. So this boolean operation. So that's how shape binders can be used to create one single body. Back to what we was doing. So that's closed without saving. This one here, so that's what I've done here. That's the whole idea of the two bodies. And this body here, which comes down the last one to fill it, which is this one. And this one, last one is the pad. It's there. And we'll just press the space bar on the body here just to hide it. So how did I create these features here and also this feature at the back? Well, this was actually quite simple in the end. If we move down through the object to this one here, and work our way backwards. So I'm gonna to come to the binder first and just hide the fillet, press the spacebar. So we've got the binder, we got the pad, this pad here. So that was from that sketch that was sitting on there. This one here. And then we had a pocket. So you can see that pocket at the back there, which is basically upon that plane I've placed this shape here and if we look at the original pad you can see the shape that I'm pulling out from there so I'm pulling out that shape there that creates a pocket like so so we pocket it straight through there I then filleted these edges really I should have done this last you can do fillets last best best uh, practice to do that so we've got that back bit there all done. And we'll click on that sketch, press the space bar. I'm actually in it at the moment, it's close. Click on that sketch, press the space bar. So we've got part of that done with the fillet. Now we need to do something with these edges to bring them down and around. This is known as drafting. So this is known as a draft. It's available 
from here, this, this icon here, this one, make a draft to the face, and this allows us to draft downwards. So if we look at that draft and double click it, we have to pick a neutral plane. So I've picked fillet face eight, which if we go back to the original fillet, this is what the draft was created from. See this face here, this is face 16. So face 16, this one, face eight is the top. So this is the neutral plane. So this won't move. So I'm drafting this face and also face six, which is the other side, this one here. Draft basically creates an angle. So this will move out as we draft this angle. This angle will move out this way and follow the curvature where it's going this way along here. And you can see that in the model. If I bring back the draft, you can see how that's moving around. We come back to the tasks and we can alter this draft. You can see how that's moving. So this moves around like so. So you can keep on going and it'll move right the way around until it goes into draft error, which you can't go any further. So we've got total control over that going this way. Let me just cancel that. So we've got the draft. Then we just neatened up the draft with a fillet on the top. This one here. So I filleted this edge to create a bit of curvature, allowing that to go down like so. And that's basically how we create that top part and the bottom like so. So if I run a geometry check over the top body, this one here in the part workbench, check geometry and run the check for that one. We're all okay, no errors. And if we look at the other body, so the bottom body part, check geometry, we will see that we have an error. We've got problem here. And we can find those quite easily by coming into the problematic body, this one here. Let's just press the space bar on the other one. And we don't have to basically work our way backwards. What we can do is check the individual geometries in here. So I'm going to press the space bar on here just to show the pad. You can see the fillet and all that has gone below it. And we'll go part, check geometry on that, and run. And you can see we haven't got any errors. So we can work our way forwards and it is actually the very last one part. Check geometry on the last pad, run check. And you can see we've got a problem here. Solid invalid, tolerance invalid. So we've got a problem there, so we can close that. So I can bring back that pad and see what that pad is. So it's got a sketch within there. And that sketch there. So we've got some problems in here. So I'm going to take out these middle sections like so. And it's probably to do with these and come in and delete that one there. Close that and that pad part, check geometry, run check. Still got problems. And the pad. So I'll click the pad, it's two dimensions. So I'm just going to set it up to dimension 39. So I'm not running all the way through there. Hit OK. Part, check geometry. And we're all OK. So we fixed that and then we can close that. And remember this is in the part design. I know I'm using the part to check geometry in here. We're gonna come back to that. And we will just add our nine millimeter. Close that.
it's all good so i can add back in my holes there i was just working backwards to see what the problem was i didn't know the pad had multi dimensions in there so that was the issue so the other problem we got is this problem here you can see we've got this coloration and a jagged line that normally means we've got an issue with the model so if i file export out this model by first choosing the model let's choose the bottom bit file export and we'll save that off and go file import you see this black line are going around here so we've got a problem this means that freehead can't compute this line so we have an issue so let's go in and see what that issue is let's get rid of that stl input so this is part of the actual let's just hide that so the additive loft this one here we've got the pocket which is in the back the additive loft and we'll hide this so look at the additive loft and see what's going on so straight away you can see some problems there there's these artifacts all the way along here so what's happening and let's have a look at the side so straight away from the side it's almost like the inner skin has swapped places with the outer on one side so this side here which is a bit odd let's cancel that and have a look at the sketches so let's bring back the two sketches so we've got those there and they look fine but they seem to swap position now one way of solving this is using an additive and subtractive loft the other way is to swap the positions of these so I'm going to swap the position of the bottom sketch which I've got open now because that's the most simplest one of the two let's see if this works we've got the bottom sketch open we're going to do a section view and we've got all the different diameters and everything here so let's make this one 202 so let's make that 210 this one 202 now we've got these so this one should be 75 and this one should be 68 so those have swapped positions now let's see if this has done anything to our additive loft we can see we've got a recompute there, so hit Control R. That will refresh that once we're actually out of the sketch. So hit Close. That's already recomputed. Go into the additive loft. And now it's much smoother. So that's actually swapped positions inside. Now I'm wondering if when I did the additive loft, because I selected from screen, that actually swap positions there let's test that so new document and what we're going to do is create two sketches along the xy plane and add two circles to one and two circles to the other so one two close that now sketch xy plane And I'm going to place two circles in here, so outside and inside. So I built them in the same way. I did the outside, the inside, and we we'll place them and actually attachment because attachments first. Let's go along the x-axis, actually along the z-axis, not the x-axis, and we'll just bring that up. So click the sketch, loft, add section. Now what I did is actually selected the sketch from the screen. So if I select the outside, that looks absolutely fine. Let's remove that. 
and axe section and select the inside this time. We we'll have to cancel out that. That's great. From the sketch, the loft, add section. And I'm going to use the inside this time. And going around, it looks fine. Looks fine there. Click the inside. Loft, add section, and then click the outside. So we've got no crossovers there, none whatsoever. So that's a bit strange, the reason why that happened. If I had a problem, let's cancel out that, with this, and they were crossing over, what I would do is, let's duplicate up these, control C, and we don't need the plane. OK, Control V, and bring these back into the body. If I had a problem, what I would do is actually create a skin myself. So coming in, let's delete the inside, close, and sketch one. Delete the inside and close. And with the other one, sketch two, delete the outside close and sketch three which is the bottom one delete the outside and close so we've got all those in individual sketches what I'd actually do is using the bottom sketch do an additive loft add section come out to the top so this is a solid now if I hide that and this time do a subtractive loft. So this red one here rather than the yellow one. And we need to select one first to select this one. Okay. And add section. Let's hide the additive. Space on that. Add section. This one. This is red now. Hit OK. What we do get is now a subtractive loft, which is used same sketches what we had before but the inner part rather than the outer part so we've gone lofting up as a solid then lofting down as a subtractive and we get that so that can solve the problem as well there's two ways of solving that problem right new sketch xy plane okay outside inside close New sketch, XY plane. Inside, outside, close. Attachment, Z, separate. Click the bottom sketch, loft, add section. Click the top sketch. Now what do you know? So I went outside, inside. Then I went inside, outside, or vice versa. And that's what's causing it. Interesting. Close. Fixed it. Never knew that. Never knew that. Let's close that down and go back to this. So now we solve that. Let's have a look, see what we got. We've got the pocket which comes out the back, which is fine. We've got the pad, which is here. And we've got the other pocket which is at the bottom let's try exporting it again and we've got some other features here which I'm just going to bring back as well and there we go pull those back now when we export this file export save file import
we can see we've got no problems. There's no blacking out of this, like that body. And it all looks fine. So we've got a valid model there. So now we should be able to boot in this together with the top. Let's have a look what we've got. I want to hide some of these sketches because they're getting in the way. And we can do that by pressing the spacebar, clicking, draw clicking those two and pressing the spacebar on there. And we'll bring back the last fillet. There we go, that one on the top and the one on the bottom. Now we've solved the issues. This one here, this pad. So we've got those two. Now we should be able to boolean these together. Make sure we've got an active body. And we double click on that to make that active. So body is active. Make sure nothing's selected. Just collapse those two. Nothing is selected. We take the body, make sure it's active. Nothing selected, body's in bold. And we run a boolean. The body that's active will disappear, add body and add this one. And that's attached to that now, like so. Let's hit OK. And now inside our body, we have all of our features. And then we've got a boolean, this last operation here. And in there, we've got the other body with all the features. So we've boolean those together, which is now ready to export. And file import, and what we should see is the finished product. And click the body, press the spacebar, and there it is. So that's all finished now, ready to go. So looking at the model, one other problem that we've got is we've got this feature here on the wrong side. So you can see this feature is above the two. In the photo, the feature is this side above the one. So the one connection point. Easy solved. We've already got this boolean. So come into the body and we just break this boolean out. So come down to the bottom boolean, click on it, hit delete. What will happen? is that when we collapse the body, we've got the two bodies back. Right click on the body, transform. And it's a case of clicking on top and using the rotate just to rotate it round to the other side like so. Hit OK. Now that's on the other side, the correct side. And we can take the active body, which none of these are active yet, so we can double click or right click, toggle active body. And let's just close those up. And now we can run the Boolean operation or up to part design, Boolean operation. And we'll fuse those together. So this is on fuse as default. And we add the body and add in the body that we need. So that's now fused together correctly and hit OK. So that's it. That's how to create this model. I hope it's helped the poster in understanding how to create some of these features in here and also with modeling full stop in FreeCAD. I will be posting this file up to the original requester as soon as I've made a few more changes in there. Please look out for any future videos and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.